Hi, welcome to the birth of a new office. My name is Anthony Guba, and I will write an office suite in 30 days. So what is the current state of office suites? So you have, of course, Microsoft Office, the most known office suite. Then Microsoft also wrote an online version of it. Then you have Google Docs, which is an online version of, uh, of an office suite. And then you have LibreOffice, which is an open source variant, I would say, of Microsoft Office, but it's quite a, a bit comparable to Microsoft Office. So as you can see at the moment, the Office Suite are either online or off offline. Then you have Office, of course, which has both, but it's not the same implementation. When it's written, probably in C++, the other one is, uh, as I think, part of C Sharp and part of uh, JavaScript. And most of them are written either in C++ or in JavaScript. And now I want to change this thing. I want to have something more free, something which is using another popular language. I want to have something written in Java. So that's what I've written, Joface. I'm going to write Joface. That combines everything from the above. So it will be available online and offline. It will be written in Java, which is a very popular language. And it will be released under the Apache license. The name of it is Joface. So, while writing an Office Suite, first, a lot of people are using an Office. When I mean a lot, I mean a lot. You probably are using yourself an Office Suite, and you probably, all everybody that is using a computer that you know is also using from time to time an Office Suite. So, if you can improve it, that would change the life of thousands of people and maybe millions of people. First, office suite are also very used into uh, business world, into uh, companies. They're also very used. And sometimes you get limited because, for example, you cannot change the code or you cannot do as you wish and so on. So with this office, it would be quite flexible also for company to adapt, redistribute and so on. It will be an office built by user for users. So here one of the points that will be it should be very easy to use for people. So what will it be? It will contain a word processor. I will write also a spreadsheet component. There will be a presentation modules and there will also be a database part. And if I have time, I'm also going to add a drawing part to this office suite. But it's 30 days, so it will be quite limited, probably. So different concepts on it have done. One of them is uh, to apply clean code for it. So why clean code? Because I want to have as many participants as possible. And one of the goals is to have also people from education. It should be very easy for students to take it, to create a very small project around it, to improve it just a little bit, and then also to release the source code or not, as they wish. But it should be very, the code should be very readable. I myself, I've learned Java something like 15 years ago while reading the code of old Java. It was then the alpha version of Java, but by reading the code, you can learn much more than just following the theory and so on. I also want as much as participation as possible. You'll see that a lot of people are using an office suite. And I think that part of them are sometimes unsatisfied or like to have something specific for them, for them that they can't find in their office suite. So here should be very easy to dig in the code, modify the code, and then restart your application as you wish. And also companies. Companies are using it for specific purpose that not, for example, all the students are writing books and so on. Sometimes they want to have something really specific for, for their product. And here it should be very easy then for them 
to adapt it and redistribute the modified version. Another concept that has been very strong on it is about internationalization. Not everybody speaks English and understand English. And especially for people who would like to have to use an office for free, you have all the emergent countries such as Brazil, for example, where a lot of people don't speak English and they would like to have it localized for their country. I also can name uh, India or China, where a lot of people are using other language than English and also would like to have something quite powerful as Office Suite. One of the parts of the concept of this Office Suite would be modular, modularity. should be very easy to attach like a plugin or a macro to it that will modify just a little bit or completely the application or just have one part of it, just have the word processor part of it and not the other parts. So it very, should be very easy not only, not only to do it, but also to distribute it. You shouldn't have to go from computer to computer to install, for example, a macro. And as I'm doing it from just one person in 30 days, I'm going to try to reuse as much as possible existing libraries and frameworks. And this way, you'll see that the effort that other people are putting in libraries and framework will bring together the force of the office, of this office. Another of the concepts that I've been starting off is should be compatible with Microsoft Office. Even though you have the open document format, still Microsoft Office, especially in the business world, is the most mainly used document format. So what are the goals of it? One of the goals is that it should be very easy to have more than 10 documents open. At the moment, I've seen that with the other offices, suites that have name, just name, for example, if you have 10 documents open, it's quite difficult to find which from going from one document to another document. Here it shouldn't be the case. If you should have the document open in tabs, you should have docking and so on. It should be very easy to find file, to find option, to find feature. People are wasting a lot of time always to find out how can I do this in my document? How can I do this in my presentation? And so on. And if you count the number of people using an office and you count the number of times wasted trying to find an option, it would be days, years, probably many, many years. So I don't want to have this in this office. It should be very adaptable for business needs. We cannot write an office that will work for everything. You should be very easy for companies to adapt it and to modify it. Because at the beginning, I cannot write an office that will be better than Microsoft Office or even better than uh, LibOffice. So it should be very easy for people who want the basic part to take the basic part, adapt it the way they want, and redistribute it. So. It's just one person, just me, Anthony Gubar, writing an office suite in 30 days. You're probably wondering, how is it possible, one person in 30 days writing an office suite in Java? So first, I've already mentioned it. I'm going to reuse existing libraries, but I'm not going to extend them. So it's not, I'm not going to take a library and if there's a feature missing suddenly, uh, take the source code, modify the source code, contribute, create a bug, and so on. Now, if it's not supported by your libraries, then I won't do it. So I should mean that I should be flexible in the things that I'm going to do in my office. Have a, of course, you have a lot. When you create an office, you have a list of a lot of things that you should do. For example, uh, open a document, save a document, but edit it, uh, set the font in bold, and so on. And sometimes you will find features that are quite easy to do, but sometimes suddenly the library is, for example, not supported it, and this is a bit difficult because you have to do a lot of development for it, then some feature will be skipped. Then in 30 days, I will not have the 1.0 version. I will release this, what's called the alpha version. This means that it will contain some bugs, 
some feature won't be there, even sometimes some simple features, but you will have a version where you can open, save documents, like a basic version. Then, if I have 30 days, I should spend as much time as possible to write code, because this is how you write the software, you need to write code. As someone I've heard so once, is no program is made of no code, so if you want to see something, you have to write it down. And then I'm not going to write unit tests. Unit tests are basically to test uh, methods, input from a method and output from the method. And this is an office in 30 days, so during the 30 days I'm going to be continuously refactoring the software, moving classes, moving methods, splitting methods, and so on. So you don't want to, to write uh, unit tests first. So from this book, uh, Clean Code, I'm not going to use uh, test-driven development at all. But here, what's important is that the software works, not that the method works. And I've already talked to some friends about it. And when I say I'm going to write an office, most of people say, what? You're going to write Microsoft Office? So the answer is, of course, no. I'm not going to write Microsoft Office. It's also not the goal to write Microsoft Office. There's some parts that will be better, some parts, of course, that will be uh, less uh, less feature of in the in there, but it's a different office. It's just like Apple say, think different. So this will be the first open source office suite in Java. Java is a very popular uh, development language. It works on Windows, Macs, Linux. And they're also developing the same thing also from IRM, such as the Raspberry Pi. Then you have, according to Wikipedia, 10 million developers of, uh, that are using Java as a developing language. It's also known as a great open source community. You have open source community, for example, in the server world. You have also a lot of well-known open source and successful projects in Java. Java also has the advantage to work offline and online, also known as applet. And Java, as it's a very popular language used in a lot of companies, it has a very good inter inter sorry, interaction with other systems, such as database, uh, for example, which, uh, with uh, JDBC, web services, uh, LDAP directories, and a lot of uh, priority uh, software, uh, such as SAP and so on. So where you can find the problem, for example, using Google Docs to connect to your uh, SAP system or to your own database, here you won't have this problem. You can just include one library to connect to your system and get the data, show it in your spreadsheet, and so on. Java also has advantages. It's based on Unicode, for example. So for inter internationalization, it's great. It has a bi-directional support. It has good support from uh, ASEAN languages. And it also has a garbage collector, so you don't need to worry about freeing the memory too much. So uh, there's one number I'd like to come back about. It's uh, the number of Java developers. So according to Wikipedia, it's 10 million Java developers. I personally, all the Java developers that I know are also from time to time using an Office suite. But let's say that only 90% of the people that are Java developers are also using an Office suite. That would mean that 9 million people are Java developers and are also using an Office suite. Now, just imagine that from these 9 million people, just 1% of them get a bit frustrated with using the office or want to improve it, but can't find how to improve their current office that they're using, and decide to participate in an open source Java office suite. And for example, Trophies, I would say, because at the moment it's the only one. That would make that 90 thousand Java developers 
would participate in Jopis. Try to imagine the speed of the project, the quality of the result, if 90,000 Java developers would participate in a Java office. I guess we could beat one of the best offices out there. Then they have decided to choose for Apache License 2.0. It has great advantages. Well, first, it's uh, very easy, it's uh, free. It will be free software, so you can deploy an unlimited computer for unlimited users during unlimited time, so without paying anything. Then you have no vendor lock-in, so you're not based on one vendor where you have the software, but every time you need a patch, for example, you need to go back to this person. It's open source, so you just have the community. You can just adapt it yourself. You can adapt it indeed your way. You have no need also to wait for a patch. If you have one missing feature, or if there's a bug, you don't have to wait one year for the next version. You can re report the bug, or you can fix the bug. You can ask someone else to fix the bug, and you can already just recompile, just redistribute the code, and you're done. You do, even if you patch shit, for example, and your company has a specific policy against open source, you don't have to share your patch. Then you also have the possibility to redistribute it in your commercial product. Let's say you having a package, maybe including hardware and other software, and then in your package you need uh, someone to edit a spreadsheet. There's some office, for example, the online office, you cannot really include them within your package. Also, the prior red, the Microsoft Office, you cannot include it, otherwise you have to sell one license also every time with your uh, part. So here you can include it. You don't have to include all the modules. You can decide, okay, I'm just going to distribute the spreadsheet module of it, of Jofface, and it's an Apache license, so no problem. And then as it's open source, you will benefit from the improvement from the community that I just talked about. Also, the Apache license is widely, widely used. It's, for example, the license used for the Spring framework. It's also the license used for the Android operating system from Google. So one of the first goals of this office will be for business as enterprise. As I've said earlier, the problem for writing for end users is that they already have, for example, LibOffice, that has many years of development, that has many developers, so I cannot match with the 1.0 all the features that are already existing in LibOffice. But for business, it's a big advantage to have something, an office, open source in Java, because otherwise they would need to hire someone that only knows C Sharp or C++ or Visual Basic to write either a macro or to modify the source code. There are many Java developers, many companies who have developers, maybe only have Java developers, so they just can take someone from another Java project, put it on this project and say, okay, it's just Java, just modify the source code as we wish and give it back to us. I say it's an Apache license and it's very uh, well used license for, uh, it's a very friendly license for businesses because even if you modify the source code, you don't have to share it back. In LibOffice, if you modify the source code, you have to give back the source code to the community. Then it's compatible with Microsoft Office. As I said, it's one of the main format used still in companies. And I'm also using standard libraries. That means if you're developing macros and so on, you're not going to develop macro against my specific API. Of course, part of it will be there for the office part, but then I'm going to reuse behind it also standard libraries where you can buy books about it when you are also have different communities, forums, where you can really extend it 
So you will also have access to the underneath library that I'm going to be using. And you can deploy online. And if you are in a company, for example, with 1,000 clients using your product, or you have more than 100 uh, employees, that also you want to distribute your patch, then it can be very difficult to have to install a patch on every computer and to dis distribute it. Here, just put your patch online on the, on the server that will either update the whole office or just update part of it or install a, like a macro and so on. So you'll have online updates and plugins. And also you'll be able to deploy online the whole thing. As it's working offline and online, you will be able also to deploy just online. So that without installing the software at all, just go to the URL. The office will start within the browser and you're done. So talking about the uh, Joffice Online, what are the, if we compare to the other online offers, here it will be, the advantage it will be exactly the same version. If you look, for example, at Office, the online version is not the same version as the offline version. They are written in both different languages. One will be, is compiled like in JavaScript. The other one is, uh, I think, something like in C++ and so on. Here you have exactly the same version online and on offline. Then you have no cloud required. If you're using, for example, Google Docs or from SkyDrive, uh, the Office, uh, Microsoft Office Suite, then you need to have your documents within the cloud. That means that your document may be hosted like in, uh, you uploaded your document to the, US, to the USA, for example, or to some other server abroad. Here, if you want, you can have all your documents local. And even if you're writing in the document, it's not sending the word that you're writing in it to, the, to a server. Everything just remains local, except, of course, the request and the download and the start of the office within your browser. Then you have no cloud locked in. If you're, for example, using uh, Google Docs, then you have to use uh, the Google Cloud. If you're using Microsoft online version, you have to use Microsoft Drive and so on. Here you will be able to use it using Dropbox, G Drive, SkyDrive. Doesn't matter if you want to use it using uh, within the cloud. You can still do it with synchronization of the files. And as just said earlier, whatever you type remains local. So Instead of typing something that will go, for example, to a server, check for if the uh, for the spelling or grammatica, check if it's correct and return back. Here, nothing that you type is sent on the server. Your documents are just private. And also, what you can do is you can customize it. And if you customize it, you will be able to deploy the customization online or just put it on your intranet. You don't have to connect, for example, to the URL of, uh, of Google or to the URL of uh, Microsoft. You can take it, you will be able to take it and put it online on your intranet and also to do it for your modified version. So just one more thing. I've created the LaunchRock uh, website for it. And if you want to sign it within the coming 10 days, you will be able, you will have a lifetime free access to the online version. So please hurry up, sign it for the online version of, uh, for the launch of Joffis within, that will be in 30 days. And if you sign up within the coming 10 days, you will have a free version, lifetime free version online access to trophies. Well, thank you for watching. I'm going to also show every day a presentation on how to write an office in Java in 30 days with each day different videos. And if you're just inter interested in the launch, just subscribe to LaunchRock and see you in 30 days. Bye.